All right, uh, what's your good, Waddle? Uh, my good is in the world of golf. Uh, today's RBC Classic in Hilton Head was, uh, was wrapped up because they had some rain and they had to delay it. Scotty Scheffler won again. It's his fourth win in his last five starts. He won $3.6 million with this win. He has now earned over $18 million so far this season on the PGA Tour. Scotty Scheffler is doing things that we haven't seen done since Tiger Woods was doing said things. So it's been cool to watch. Scotty Scheffler's my good. Unstoppable. Unbelievable. Um, uh, the bowl season ended on Friday. That obviously isn't good. Their performance on Friday was awful. But uh, Stephen No wrote an article for the Sporting News that I highlighted on Twitter that every Bulls fan should read. And I want to read you a couple passages from it because I thought this was gold. Um, he tweeted it out and he wrote, I've watched every Bulls game for decades. This is the end of the line for me and for him as a fan. I, I thought these two, this one sums up me as a fan. And, and it's what we talked about on Friday, Waddle, about how a lot of us love the team even though we hate the team. He wrote this in, in, in a part of the article. In spite of themselves, the Bulls still lead the league every year in home attendance. Mm. Fans love their team even when they hate it. While many of the ones that I speak to have stopped watching religiously, they still follow closely. They can't quit the habit. I think that's, that's absolutely outstanding because it sums up, I was texting with Courtney. I don't think I'm speaking out of school when I, I both say that Courtney and I were texting each other how much we hate this team. We love our Bulls. We hate this team. We hate them. And this is another passage from Stephen's article. He wrote, Bulls ownership and upper management want to live their best lives. They like to clock in at 10 a.m., go golfing after lunch, enjoy the fruits of the business they built three decades ago. They take fantastic care of their employees, they wreck, rake in the profits, and they have no ambition beyond that. It's so true. And it, it, it is what I described as poetry. What he wrote was poetry. Poetry. They have, they have no desire to try to win. And I wish they cared about winning as much as this fan base cared about this team. And they simply don't. And here we are again, Bulls fans, just sitting here a year later in the exact same place. I'm sure we've all gone through this exercise. What is the motivation for not trying as hard as possible to win? Because it costs more money? I mean, I would think the return on your investment would be there several times over. You were already making money. You've got the biggest building in the NBA. You've got the highest attendance rate. I would think that your revenues would go right. up. Right. Even if you are profitable now, like, you could be profitable and win. Did I see also in that article there's, they've only gone into the luxury tax one time in their history? That was a Bill Simmons tweet. Oh, that was Simmons? Like, okay. Simmons, Simmons also roasted them. Like, again, this is a, a lot of people are noticing. Yes. Uh, where is it? He, he wrote... He wrote, the Chicago Bulls are the third biggest market in America. They've only paid the luxury tax once. It's actually hilarious how cheap they are. They just try to go 42 and 40 every year and win a play-in game and call it a year. The other big market owners must love having them. And then he wrote, printed out their, their records. Like, it's Bill Simmons in Boston. Yes. Like, they don't. He doesn't care, and it starts at the top. And the White Sox are a joke, and the Bulls aren't far behind. They don't care. They, they don't try to win. And he's laughing at us. Go ahead, guys. What do you uh, have? Some real basketball up north, boys. How about the uh, performance by the Bucks and Dame Lillard? 35 first-half points led the Bucks to a very nice 69-42 halftime lead. Which gave them the 27. They knew there had to be a draw. They knew there had to be some sort of a. What? 
that you could get the 69 reference. Oh, in. yeah, there was the, that gave them the 27-point cushion yeah. they needed to hang on. The uh, Pacers really didn't show up to game one, but Dame Lillard did, at least for the first half, because yeah. after his 35 points in the first half, he decided to shut it down, did not score the remainder of the way, but it was enough for the Bucks game one win over the Pacers. Good that's performance a, that's by a long. That's a long way to go to get this. The reference was, and I admire it. My, I no, get, no, no. I get a second was, code. My good is Meller taking the long way to, to 69 lane. It was more for uh, Dame's 35-point first-half performance, followed up by a goose egg. You don't see that too often. Sometimes they like that when you take the long way. Okay. Eh? Well, I will say this. I uh, My bad was actually Dame's second half because his line was 35 and a half. For his oh, over under, he no, scored thirty five no, in the first half. No, and the second was half. Michael Porter's brother. <laughs> oh, jo- was he in- involved? Jante Porter, look out! But yeah, that was my bad. Uh, wow. Anyway, my good. How can you lose that bet? Think about. I mean, you're you're counting your money at halftime. And by the way, I bet it got some action too because there was no Giannis. Well, and it's yeah, it's a big name too. Yeah. It's Dame Dame Lillard. He's, oh, he's the best player the in the game. He's the biggest points. name. He is thirty five in the first half, and you lose. <laughs> Bad beat. Oh my right God. there. Uh, my good though is the home teams in the NBA and Stanley Cup playoffs from this weekend because they were a perfect fourteen and zero. Wow. Only two of them were underdogs, but still fourteen and zero for home teams in the the playoffs right there out of the gate for. The playoffs. I thought that was pretty. I couldn't believe that. You that was for the NHL a, and the NBA NHL combined. And NBA. Yep. Swept the board. Okay. What do you got, Waddle? What's uh, your bad? My bad is quick. I mean, it was the Bulls' performance on Friday night. They lost one twelve ninety one. They were never in it. Never. Uh, I believe at one point, I think the Heat had missed ten straight shots, or they had missed ten, ten trips down the down the floor and and didn't score, and they just could never close the gap. They just. You know what? It was the apropos ending to this season. It, you sadly. know, and we talked about it on Friday that, you know, last year, Zach Levine scored 39 points in the Toronto game to get them to Miami and scored 15 in the second game. Kobe White followed that pattern. Yes. And Kobe had a great year. He's one of three people nominated for the most improved player. But Kobe's got to be better than that. If that was Zach, we'd rip him. And um kobe's not on zach's level and he's not getting paid close to that i get it but kobe needed to be better than he was in miami he, he he's just got to be better yep um but but he is who he is and that's why you can't over love a lot of your guys either um my bad is 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 adbert and and you mentioned it earlier that council can't run him out there as the closer you know it, and it's why I was so thankful in that one game the Cubs won, I think it was in Seattle, when they won the game on the pickoff with the runner on first. Because it seems every game that he's protecting a one-run lead, he gives up a home run. Yeah, I think that was a fourth time this year. It's his fourth blown save. And I think he's allowed the... It was the first game of the year against Texas. It happened. Um, it, 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 he's had the flair for the dramatic in the bad way this year, where last year he had the flair for the dramatic in the good way. And they have been, even though they're off to a good start, they're four above, but that you just, after the really good road trip and winning the first game of that series, to lose the next two out of three to the Marlins, that's not the way to go and to blow that first game of the doubleheader. Um, they've got a closer issue. They've got a bullpen issue. And that was my bad to blow another save, their fourth blown save. I don't think a, a big market team with high expectations can come into this season thinking Alzale was just going to blossom into their closer. I, I think it was a mistake on their behalf. And then it, now you're going to have to give up a prospect yeah. when, again, I would rather just pay. Go in, like we were just talking about it with Jerry. Go in the luxury tax. Yes. Don't give up one of these good prospects. And they're going to have to do it again. It's just money. What do you guys say? This is uh, the portion, the bad portion, where it is a good time to mention the Chicago White Sox are a franchise, are off to a franchise worst start at 3 and 18. They are, they have lost nine of their last 10. They have scored 45 runs in 21 games, barely over two runs per game. We're talking about an abysmal offensive start. That really has no end in sight when you look at up and down at this lineup, and they are 
abhorrently bad. That's my bad. The it's, White Sox. It's terrible. It, 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 it's and anyone who says if you didn't see this coming, you weren't paying attention. Like no one ever could have seen a historically bad start coming. Nobody. No one ever. Tyler, what do you got? My bad was the Dame Lillard. Oh, uh, that's right. Second half. Dirty. Wow. So good. Uh, my dirty was a story from Australia. Health officials are warning people not to attempt to catch snakes after they've been bitten by them. The caution comes after snake bite vic victims have brought the reptiles with them into the emergency room. What, what to say? This is the snake that Doctors bit me? Doctors say calling for help, administering first aid, and remaining calm is all patients need to do. Snake bite victim victims are endangering medical staff by bringing the reptiles with them to the hospital. Not only is it dirty, it's stupid. If you get bit by a snake, don't catch the snake and bring the snake into the emergency room where it could possibly get away from you and bite somebody else. That's a, that's a yeah, that Dumb is. Dumbass. Dumbass. And did anybody recommend on um, what to watch for, baby reindeer? Has anyone recommended that? No, but I saw it last night. I clicked on it, but I, it, I it's gonna didn't be my, see it. It's going to be my what to watch for on Friday, but I just want to say that that's dirty. I've watched the first three episodes, and what I mean by dirty, I don't mean like the type of like it's the it, number one show on it's the, the number yeah. one show right now on netflix it just makes you feel dirty watching it it's one of those dramas that it, it's at times very cringeworthy and it does its tonight. job because it it makes you feel it really it makes you feel it if you know what i mean as far as the drama it, it is what's it about stalking Ooh. that yeah Okay, not good. That, that, and, it, and it, I'm not giving anything away by that. You learn that very, very quickly. And it's it's true. It's a true story. But it's a, it's, it's a drama series. Oh. So it's not a documentary. Um, it's the number one show on Netflix. It makes you feel dirty, and it does its job. And uh, it's really good. My Dirty Boys, another bad baseball team in Major League Baseball, the Colorado Rockies almost were thwar thwarted by a fan yesterday. Oh, It was a 0-0 game, which is rare enough in Coors Field. I think it was only the third time in Coors Field history that it was 0-0 in the bottom of the ninth inning. And a Colorado Rockies player stepped to the plate and launched one, which should have ended the game. But a fan in left field reached out to grab the ball. He reached over the uh the actual fence did not retain the ball actually dropped it onto the field and so what originally looked like what was going to be a double and put the rockies in position to at least go ahead and win the game ended up being the third out of the inning because the fan was called for interference was it interference did you i tried to watch like did he really reach over i think he did he did just enough and it was it, it did prevent the seattle mariners left fielder from potentially robbing the player of a home run but i do think it was enough of a, a lean over to be fan interference it was aggressive that's for sure he was really going for that baseball and then uh, tyler what's what's your dirty my dirty was at the chevron championship which is on the lpga tour jasmine Koo. so she had a sh an approach shot that was going over water she had this thing aimed flush into the water but luckily for her there was a floating ad board oh. in the water. She banked it oh, off this. the yeah. ad board and it overshot the green, but it should have been a, a water penalty. Instead, she found herself uh, in a tie for 13th in the entire tournament wow. as an amateur. The other dirty component, because she's an amateur, she cannot collect the $112,000 that should be going her way. We got to, uh, to speaking of dirty and, and playing sports, talk about what Tyler did over the weekend. Yeah. And, and and whether or not this is a dirty sport.